So we left at this issue where we have a race condition for writing to the mails variable. If we launch this again, of course, we're gonna get a different number than 2 million, which is what we would expect if, you, if we would just do everything in one thread. Now we know why that is, but in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to solve this issue. And answer is using a mutex. This is how you can solve the issue. A mutex is sort of a lock around a section of code, so to speak. So for example, what we could do is, let's say, have a variable called lock, set it to zero, and set it to one whenever you're doing something, and set it to zero whenever you're done doing something. Okay, and before all this, check if the lock is already one. So if the lock is already one, right, before you are trying to set the lock to one, then you should sort of wait until the lock is zero. This way, uh, what would happen is that if a thread tries to actually increment the males variable, well, it certainly will increment it, but it will also set the lock to one. So if the second thread comes in at the same time and tries to increment it, it's gonna stop at that condition because the lock is gonna be set to one. So only after we're done incrementing, it's gonna be reset to zero. So then the second, the second thread could come in and read, increment and write in the right order, right? So nowhere you would have a thread that just starts reading and then the other thread would start executing like we had in that example where i showed you the race condition right so in the race condition we had a uh, read and then the thread got paused for whatever reason uh, and then the second thread came in and started read increment write like seven times and then this guy had inside its memory inside its cpu's registers the old value Right, which was then written to the memory. Like this, we can prevent it. But how do we wait until the lock is zero? Well, we don't really have to implement our own variable with lock things and whatnot. The pthread, the POSIX thread API actually has something like that implemented that we can already use and is much safer than what we would do here. So to start using it, so we're gonna remove this lock variable. We're gonna replace it with a pthread underscore mutex, underscore t, and call it, let's say mutex for now, for simplicity's sake. Okay, so we have a mutex, and well, before we can use it, we have to initialize it. So to initialize it, we go down here, and let's say we initialize it before creating the thread, of course, I'm gonna say pthread mutex init, right? And this guy takes in just two arguments, the address to that mutex, so just add mutex, and then some attributes, which we're not gonna get into right now. So those those can be set to null, and it's gonna be all right. So just set everything. Basically, when we pass here null, it's gonna set everything to default, and that's all right for us. And of course, with an init comes with a, comes with a destroy, so we're gonna have to also destroy the memory that's been allocated here. So I'm gonna call pthread mutex destroy, and this guy just takes in the address to the mutex. No more second parameter, right? So pthread mutex init with the mutex and then destroy. And now we have the mutex available to us. We haven't used it yet in any way, shape or form. We just initialize it. Now let's go to actually using it. So here, these three operations. So checking if the lock well, has been locked, has been taken by someone, some thread and waiting until that uh, lock is unlocked and also setting to one the lock once we are done doing all that is being accomplished with just one function and that function is called pthread mutex lock so lock all it takes is just a reference to our mutex and that's it so this just this one function does all that for us so we don't have to care about waiting and uh, not waiting and finishing waiting for all that. Now in place of this operation, setting our lock to zero, basically unlocking the mutex is just the call to pthread mutex unlock, as you might have guessed. 
and we're just passing the mutex and that is it my friends all you have to do is just call lock and unlock and all of a sudden the result is going to be correct so now if we try to launch this it's gonna take a bit longer but we do get the right result two million right two million even though we have incremented it a million times and it's in a multi-threaded context it works and we can even increment it more times like let's say 10 million and it's still going to work it might take a bit longer but it is still going to work there we go that is 20 yeah 20 million so what does this do actually well this locking and unlocking of mutexes is basically um, protecting think about it as sort of some brackets between a part of a code that you want to protect to protect against what to protect against other threads executing it at the same time so if at any point a thread is executing this this line of code there's not going to be any other thread that's going to execute this same line of code simply because there's a mutex around it if we didn't have the mutex we didn't have this we wouldn't have this um certainty and then we could get into race conditions of course not all the time not all instructions have to be like that because if all instructions are going to be executed only by one thread at one point in time might as well just have one single thread and execute it all right now the idea is that we want in this case correct data and this program on its own doesn't do anything useful so <laughs> it's just a good example so that you understand what's going on behind the scenes and why mutexes are uh, needed and before anyone asks this actually works with more than just one thread so if i for example try to create two more threads let's copy and paste this and i'm gonna initialize here p3 and p4 and this case is gonna be p4 p3 okay uh, and then I'm gonna join it two more times. So let's say P3 and P4 here. I guess just for correctness sake, let's do it. Let's give it a different uh, error <laughs> number everywhere. Not really a big deal, but just uh, to be safe. And now if we try to execute with four, four threads, you'll notice that we are gonna get a pretty long wait time but we're gonna get a result of 40 million without those threads that result probably would have been in the 20 million let's actually check and see if i try to launch this without the locks and unlocks as you can see it's one or it's 15 million so that was a pretty bad result if we didn't use stress but uh, notice it was faster so it is much better to use to don't not use mutexes whenever possible but in this case we kind of have to it's just an example you'll see in the future exactly when to when and why to use mutexes now one more thing that i forgot to mention is that a race condition can only occur on a multi-core processor if you have a single core processor then it's very unlikely that you will encounter a race condition. But as nowadays most, like 99% of the CPUs out there are multi-core, even though low-powered ones, you are going to encounter this. Okay, that's about it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Of course, the source code of today's video will be also down in the description below on our website. Thank you so much for watching and take care. Bye.